iPads, cell phones, TV. Children are constantly drawn to devices these days. But what are you doing while they're using them? When 54% of the recordings, we heard no um, mother-child interaction. Well, today's parents often have a love-hate relationship with technology, loving the instant entertainment it can offer, hating the way kids turn into zombies as soon as it's turned on. But are parents part of the problem? Dr. Frank McGeorge here with an eye-opening new study. Frank? Well, that's exactly it. You know, maybe you've had the experience of trying to get your child's attention while they're using a tablet or cell phone. You might as well be talking to the wall. But it's not just teenagers that are using these devices. In fact, a recent study looked at what happens when, in the home, younger children are spending screen time. Call it the tablet trance. I can literally come in the door from work if they're downstairs and, hi guys, no. not a word. Rihanna and Demetrius Orr of East Point keep a close eye on the screen time of their three children. But when sons Ahmad and Amir are using their tablets, getting their attention is tough. And I literally find myself saying they didn't hear you. It's interactions like this that interest researcher Dr. Sarah Domoff. She's co-author of a study by the University of Michigan that measures the level of interaction between children ages 3 to 5 and mothers during screen time. 44 families wore recording devices at home. We could listen to the recordings when children were watching different types of media and really hear what they're exposed to and importantly what their mothers are talking to them about. The results? One of our main findings is that uh, mothers of children um, in these homes were not speaking to their children about the media content that they were watching. In 54% of the recordings, there was no mother-child interaction when media was being used. We did have 33% where there were brief um, comments back and forth about what the children were watching, but for the majority of the time, um, children were not communicating with their mothers. Some recordings highlighted a missed opportunity for parents. When the child tried to get the parent's attention or tried to talk about the content, but there was no response. Only 13% of the recordings captured what researchers call active mediation. Active mediation, an example would be um, a parent explaining um, the, the purpose of a commercial to the child or saying, um, you know, I wonder how that character feels when, when that other character treats them that way. So it's really kind of processing the content and helping the child think about what's happening and even highlighting values that are important to the family. Active mediation has been found to help reduce the impact of advertising and other media influences on children. But Domoff admits that's difficult for parents using technology as an electronic babysitter of sorts. It's just really challenging to be present while your child's watching television or using different types of media when you have other things going on, trying to take care of household tasks or deal with other siblings. The study also found differences based on the mother's level of education. Children of mothers with graduate degrees tended to watch more educational program, had less screen time overall, and had more parent interaction when they did use devices. Domoff urges all parents to think about the quality of screen time, not just the quantity. Parents have a powerful role in protecting um, children from certain messages in the media, and um, I think that's a really positive message. Nice. Oh. Oh. The Orr family agrees. I think the interaction is important, but that's how I was raised. I, I, I spent a, a ton of time with my parents, and we spent a ton of time with them. And I do want them to have the ability to work the technology, to understand the technology, but you don't have to live on it all day to do that. Sarah Domoff is now an assistant professor at Central Michigan University, and she says the next step for the research is to record the interactions of fathers, siblings, and other caregivers to ultimately use the information to be make better recommendations to families about how to use all this technology. And it is a lot of technology. So you introduced us right. to the Dorr family. Mm -hmm. You're, we're going to hear more from them coming up tomorrow at 5 o'clock, right? That's exactly it. You know, as is often the case, you go to do one story and you find out there's another sure. story. In, the, in this process, we found out the Orr family not only monitors screen time closely, they actually don't allow their children to watch TV during the school week. So tomorrow at 5, we're going to show you how they make that work and what inspired them to make that decision. Come on, a couple newscasts a day is all we ask. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more coming up then tomorrow. All right, Doc.